Set timer. No, 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 no. Like I said, I'm having, and then the lights are messed up. They should have been off. They wouldn't show up. Dude, it's a fucking super moon tonight. Which is why everybody who works in the food and beverage industry and the service industry is pissed off as shit. Because the rest of you are acting like assholes. And I'm sitting down tonight, not even on a stool, because I'm tired. Friday night I got four hours of sleep. Well, you know, I'm not allowed to drink on shift. I'm lucky if I can get one piss break. Over eight hours. Trying to pass that kidney stone and this doesn't help. And I sit like this at the front door because when I do stand up, I'm larger than all these little rich white kids who are coming into the bar. <laughs> My friend the Reverend helped me get the job. He's here tonight. Give it up for the Rev. And one of my favorites is, um, really? You need to see my ID? And I check the ID, and the, day, the year of birth is 1995. I go, that's hilarious. I graduated high school that year. Right? And then there was a night where uh, there was like four girls coming in. And I was like, hey everybody, ID, how you doing tonight? I just need to see your IDs, pull them out. This is a simple operation if you are an adult. It should take no longer than two seconds. I do that, you do this, I do this, I look at your face, you're inside getting drunker than you should be. But there's always the one girl. I bet you can't. I bet you can't guess how old I am. In fact, I bet you're older. I bet I'm older than you. That's you. He's talking about you. Says uh, you were born in 1988. I'm about to turn 40, little girl. Don't give me shit on this. You're wasting my time and your time. So for any of you who go to a bar, just have your fucking ID out. I don't care how old you are, just be ready to just go, here. So there was a couple wandering down the road, two, two gentlemen, and they were making out in front of each other, um, or rather in front of me. And they were doing this weird chin chewing thing like, that I didn't understand. I was like, these two are fucked up. <laughs> Definitely. And then they, I'm like, and I'm just doing that, like rubbing my prayer beads, going, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And they did. But then they came back, and I was like, oh, I really shouldn't let these guys in. They were like, look, we just want one drink and a pack of cigarettes. I was like, cool, one drink, pack of cigarettes, and the both of you are out of here. And after a little bit, I turn around and I see the guy just pulling on his tongue. Explain that shit to me. I've done a lot of drugs in my life. I've never just sat leaning against the bar pulling I'm like, <laughs> I was like, okay, look, um, sir, I told you both to behave yourselves. You gotta leave right now. And uh, he wouldn't put down his drink. I was like, put your drink on the bar, sir. I'm asking you politely. 
and then we're going to go outside and you're going to go. I'll call you a cab if you want. And the reverend over here, he backed me up, you know, because he's, he looks like a roadie for ZZ Top. Uh, true start. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reverend. <laughs> So one night I'm out there and I, I think it was the same night, a uh, very heavy set girl fell down into the gravel pit outside of the barn and there was a wee lad about 120 pounds soaking wet with batteries in his pockets and he's trying to pick her up. She weighs at least twice as much as him. And I walked outside and said, hey, do you need a hand? And he's like, yes, thank you. I'm like, okay, great, let's get her up. We like propped her against the signpost. And I was like, okay, look, um, do you need me to call you a cab? And he throws his phone in my face and he's like, I'm calling an Uber, man. <laughs> okay, thank you, sir. Um, would you mind just moving away from the front of the bar I work at? Just 20 feet that way, there's another parking meter that you can prop her up against. He's like, this is a sidewalk. It's public property. My parents are lawyers. I know the law. <laughs> no, dude, my dad is a woodworker and a cabinet maker. It doesn't mean I need to know, it doesn't mean I know how to use a fucking miter block. <laughs> And there was the bro dude last night who was running around picking up his buddies and like and hitting on women. Not necessarily hitting on them, but just like doing that, hey, how are you? You having fun tonight? I'm having a good time. And I was like, oh, dude, I'm gonna have to ask you to go. And I pulled him aside and I said, listen, sir, I just want you to know you're acting up a little bit. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave if you continue this behavior. Uh, I hope you have a good time tonight. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry, dude. Three high fives. I did not initiate any of those high fives. <laughs> I was like, okay. Oh, Keeps acting up. I went to his friend. I was like, look, dude, you gotta keep an eye on your buddy because otherwise I'm going to have to ask him to leave. He was like, oh, okay, I got it. And then the guy's jumping up and down and like hugging people and slapping ass. I hang out in a lot of gnarly bars. I have my entire life. I, hide, I hunt down the most disgusting bar you can possibly find. True story. <laughs> Tell me on that one I'm not lying. This is all off the cuff, man. And you know what? Uh, you know, I hang out with a lot of drunks, and they're dangerous people. They behave themselves. They just sit there and drink, and then occasionally do this. Are you, <laughs> you are not with us. <laughs> <laughs> Since I moved to Austin, I haven't seen a single solid bar fight. And by solid, I mean like a really good one. Good old Paso. <laughs> hey, man. Stop. Let's be friends. So, uh,. <clears throat> Another guy came up to me, asked, I'm um, sorry, last night a girl came up as I'm sitting on a stool, cute, not attractive, starts grinding on my knee, and she asked me where I could find cocaine for her. You know it. <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry, miss, I don't know how to do that. She goes, well, do you know where I can get Xanax? I was like, I'm sorry, miss, like, I can't do that. She's like, and I, and I said, do you want to go up or down? <laughs> Do you want cocaine or Xanax? Like, what's the, what's the deal? She's like, I just want something. I'm like, oh, you just want white powder. Okay. <laughs> we, have, we have some soap in the back that you can grind on. <laughs> so you gotta add one of those little, like... And it's a, it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing. And...
I guess my larger point, I, I can keep going on and on and I won't because I'm over time. Um, to all of you, who here has worked in service? Food and beverage? No. Fuck yeah. Okay. For the rest of you, everybody raise your hand again for food and beverage. Anybody who's not raising their hand, tip those motherfuckers. <laughs> I think that everybody, which is more important than learning a trade, uh, and more important than getting a college degree, is working in service. Should you have children, should you ever plan to have children, I would highly encourage you to get them a job in service because it will make them a better human being as they grow up. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. You realize how hard you people work to serve you for how little money. Yep. Yep. And if you tip less than 20%, you're a fucking asshole. True story. I, don't have one to go out. I got books for sale. Thank you, everybody. Woo. Drunk enough. Oh, you had a headbang. No, no, no. No, no, no.